Henry IV, Part I, is a history play written by William Shakespeare around 1598. Following Richard II as part of a tetralogy, it does not conform to the conventions of a chronicle play, instead moving rapidly from court life to street life. Nonetheless, the play proved immensely popular with audiences, alternating between two storylines that eventually intersect the play details the Percy family's plot against King Henry, who must rely on his vagabond son in the battle for his kingdom. The play opens on an aging King Henry who is struggling to maintain control of the English throne after usurping it from Richard II. The king is furious to receive news that one of his commanders, Mortimer, has lost a battle to Glendur of Wales. At the same time, he learns that another commander, Henry Percy, or Hotspur, has succeeded in defeating Douglas of Scotland. But Hotspur has refused to comply with King Henry's request that he send his prisoners of war back to London. Enraged, King Henry summons Hotspur to court, ordering the young commander to yield his prisoners. Joined by his father, the Earl of Northumberland, and his uncle, the Earl of Worcester, Hotspur explains that he only denied the release of his prisoners because he was still wounded and exhausted from battle. The Percys also assert that they are eager to retrieve Hotspur's brother-in-law, Lord Mortimer, from the Welsh, who are holding him captive. King Henry, however, believes that Mortimer lost the battle on purpose, since he recently married the daughter of his opponent, Glendur. As a result, the king rejects the Percy's pleas for Mortimer's ransom and threatens Hotspur with punishment. Privately, Worcester and Northumberland gripe about having helped Henry to defeat Richard II with no reward, and they advise Hotspur to consider raising an army with Douglas and Glendur to overthrow Henry. Meanwhile, the king's son, Prince Harry, or Hal, spends his time drinking in seedy taverns with vagrants and lowlifes. Chief among Hal's tavern friends is Falstaff, a cantankerous nobleman who's planning a robbery in which Hal agrees to participate. In an aside, Hal indicates to the audience that he is only dallying with the tavern crowd in order to garner support for his eventual rise to power. Led by Falstaff, the thieves rob a group of well-to-do travelers. In disguise, Hal and Poins, another robber, play a trick on Falstaff by mugging him of his ill-gotten gains. The next night, when Falstaff recounts the story to a crowd at the tavern, he exaggerates, saying he fought off many men. When Hal reveals that it was him and Poins, Falstaff claims that he knew it was them all along, but wanted to spare the prince of blame. Together, Hotspur of England, Douglas of Scotland, Glendur of Wells, and the Archbishop of York gather an army at Shrewsbury to challenge King Henry. But Hotspur, Douglas, and Glendur also begin to argue about how they will split up the territories if they successfully defeat Henry. Hotspur is especially at odds with Glendur, whom he views as overly mystical. Hal's chance to prove himself arrives when his father, the king, calls him home and begs Hal to become more responsible. Hal agrees, and Henry appoints him as a high-ranking military commander tasked with leading the army against the rebel Hotspur. Hal starts by recruiting his tavern companions, including the corpulent Falstaff, for the infantry. Meanwhile, Hotspur encounters some challenges while preparing to go to battle. While Henry offers a full pardon to the rebels if they back down, Worcester fails to deliver this message to Hotspur, as he is convinced that Henry will not honor the pardon. Glendur and his army are delayed, while Northumberland reportedly falls ill, diminishing the rebellion's manpower. Reluctantly, Hal proceeds with preparing for war. 
Henry prepares for combat as well, stocking the battlefield with nobles disguised as him. The battle begins, and Douglas kills several of these decoys before reaching the real King Henry. Just in time, Hal saves his father by chasing Douglas away, and Henry admits that he is sorry to have doubted his son's abilities. Next, Hal faces off against Hotspur, with Falstaff arriving to cheer Hal on from the sidelines. Just then, Douglas arrives and attacks Falstaff, who falls down as if dead. Dueling, Hal successfully kills Hotspur, but is saddened by the loss of Falstaff. To his surprise, however, Falstaff rises to his feet and stabs Hotspur's lifeless body a second time, which he then carries off in an attempt to take credit for the kill. In the end, King Henry's army wins the battle, killing or capturing all of the rebel commanders. Henry sentences Worcester to death for failing to relay his message to Hotspur, while Hal pardons Douglas, realizing that this is strategically necessary if he wants to rule Scotland one day. Finally, Henry splits his army into two parts, one of which will march on York and the other of which will attack Glendore.